Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of the executions that occurred on June 14th, 1945 near Braunschweig, Germany of six Germans and the mystery that surrounds this execution, especially when it comes to Lieutenant Gunther Schultz of Operation Grief. This team leader was actually caught in December of 1944 and part of a team that was executed on December 26th, 1944 in Henry Chappelle, uh, not to be confused with the popular Gunther Billing man Fred Pernas and Wilhelm Schmidt execution that occurred in Henry Chappelle on December 23rd of 1944. That's the one that we see most of the popular images about. But these other three that were executed three days later had a fourth man on the team. That fourth man was Gunther Schultz. So why if his team was executed on December 26th, why was Gunther Schultz not executed until June 14th of 1945 with these other five Germans? The short answer is they were using him for information. But if so, why didn't, like Scorsese, why didn't he get off? Why did he get sentenced to death and then executed so much later? The team led by Lieutenant Gunther Schultz again was Manfred Barney, Heinz Reich, and Karl Heinz Weisenfeld. They were caught near Liege, Belgium on December 19th, 1944. We're going to do our best to explain how he ended up there and how they got caught as well. We'll start at the beginning of young Gunther Schultz's military career. At the Military Archive in Freiburg, Germany, there is a military file of Gunther Schultz. Before joining the Wehrmacht, Gunther Schultz led the Hitler Youth. He was active there as a young tribe leader. Then from February 1940, Gunther Schultz serves at the RAD. His life plans were to become a doctor. He wanted to go to the German colonies in Africa with his fiance after the war. They wanted to work there as doctors. Uh, nothing really came of those plans because Gunther Schultz was called upon to do his duty for the homeland. After researching Gunther Schultz's military personnel file, I found some assessments in here that are just as interesting as his career itself. Uh, he was judged as someone who was intelligent and able to handle tensions well. Despite his young age, he is firmly in his own skin. He is open and honest, and especially the latter is worth remembering. After a course for young war officers in June 1942, he got another review. Uh, Gunther Schultz has a healthy self-confidence and self-awareness and is mentally above average. The learning ability is good. The assessment ends with the observation that the student is willing to start an officer career, but with the temporary employment contract. In February 1943, the following assessment. One word stands out in this assessment according to his superior. What stood out about Gunther Schultz according to his superior was his talent for improvisation. Another surprise that I found in Gunther Schultz's personnel file was that he had to appear in court in uh, Grossenhain on March 6, 1944 for a court-martial. The young lieutenant was charged with instigating theft. The verdict does not show what happened at the time and who was involved. The sentence imposed was originally four months in jail and he would lose his rank. The verdict was watered down on September 26th. The sentence was reduced by half and suspended. He was allowed to keep his rank but had to prove himself at the front. Because of this conviction and perhaps also to find a suitable place at the front, he was reassessed on September 26th, 1944 in Grossenhain. Gunther Schultz is described as an avid and convinced National Socialist. It is stated that he did not yet have the opportunity to prove himself before the enemy. Schultz even asked to be deployed as a paratrooper, paratrooper at the front. Again, it's mentioned of his ability to cope with tensions and ability to develop one's own initiative. Uh, in 1944 is also when Gunther Schultz's name finally returns to the case file of Otto Scorsesny, the actual leader of Operation Grief. Um, 
all of the death sentences that were imposed on the participants of Operation Grief are in Scorsese's file. Uh, the fact that not all the death sentences have been executed still causes some confusion. Uh, but in addition to these death sentences, one criminal case was completely added to this to Scorsese's file, and that was the Schultz case. The reopened criminal case against Lieutenant Gunther Schultz took place on May 5, 1945. The Gunther Schultz team was arrested on December 19, 1944, between 9 and 10 p.m. Um, near Liege, Belgium. The military trial was limited to Manfred Brani, Hans Reich, and Karl Heinz Weisenfeld on December 23, 1944. Gunther Schultz actually acted as a witness and the three other team members were sentenced and executed. So how did Gunther Schultz become part of Operation Grief? In Gunther Schultz's interrogation by the Americans as to how he ended up in the Ardennes, uh, he states, I was in Einsheim in August 1944 before a German court because I had tried to cross the American line. I was sentenced to three months in prison and I would be dismissed. The court first sentenced him, then decided that I, he had to go to the front and then get three months in prison. The next date mentioned is November 7th, 1944, in Berlin at the paratroopers headquarters. Schultz had to fill in papers there, and that's when he was sent to the Scorsese unit. His English and French were tested there. He says that there were four groups and that the people were classified in one of those four groups according to their language skills. Then he was sent to Grafenwar. He also calls the code name Robin Hugel. Upon arrival in Grafenwar, he ended up at Aber Lieutenant Stalu. After the language skills were tested here too, he would have been told that he would have to do work as an interpreter. We know this isn't true, but there is a question of where this story has its origin. Um, it's clear that different people come with the same story at different times about being told they were going to be an interpreter. After the December 23, 1944 trial against Brawny, Reich, and Weisenfeld, Lieutenant Schultz was taken to France. Schultz was heard in Versailles about an attack on General Eisenhower planned by Scorsese. I personally think this is one of the biggest reasons he was kept alive. His credibility does come under attack when he claims that he had participated in an attack on Adolf Hitler. So what gave these this team of operation grief away? Uh, this will refer to Staff Sergeant L. Hansen of the U.S. 769th Military Police Battalion, Company C. He was heard a lot uh, from during uh, Lieutenant Schultz's case. He told how and where the Jeep was stopped. The team was stopped on the N3, where the N3 crosses the channel, the channel that runs from Aiken to Liege. It was many small details that were incorrect. One of the team members had stored his documents in cellophane, highly unusual for an American. In addition, the number on his ID plate deviated from the number the man mentioned, also repeatedly. Explosives were found in the Jeep. The witness describes it as explosive material in the form of American canteen bottles filled with solid explosive material with igniters. A large number of detonators were with electrical wires were in the Jeep. The weapons found included two machine guns and a lot of hand grenades. The soldiers had both English and American money with them. When searching the Jeep again, a large stack of maps, approximately 30 pieces were found. Um, about the clothing of the four soldiers, the sergeant was able to tell that Brawny was wearing black German shoes. Weisenfeld and Reich were wearing complete American uniforms. Hansen thought he remembered that Schultz was wearing a German sweater and a German undershirt. All four wore American jackets and helmets. Another witness, uh, Frederick Wallach, 1st Lieutenant, G2, Section 1st Army, stated that from the outset he pointed out to the prisoners that in their actions they were not protected by the Hague Convention and would be executed. At the time, Schultz replied that he did not expect anything else. Schultz had told him that he was a member of the Einheit Stalu. 
their assignment was to block roads and to cause confusion on the roads in the direction of Liege. During that interrogation, Schultz also said that he should have reported to another group, a jeep with transmitting equipment. That unit would pass on its reports to the central post of the 150. Jeeps did not have windshields. Gunther Schultz stated he did regret having taken part in the operation of Panzer Brigade 150. Lieutenant Schultz insisted on being allowed to help the U.S. Army to stop the Panzer Brigade's activities. In return, Schultz asked to be allowed to shoot himself. As we know, this request was never followed through with. In preparation for Operation Grief, uh, Schultz also mentions that Otto Scorsese's codename was Solar. He says that the German tanks, the Panther and Tiger tanks, were trimmed to look like American tanks from a distance. And you can see some pictures of those tanks. The whole 150th Panzer Brigade got U.S. uniforms. It was first divided into two, later three platoons. Schultz explained that the exercises to prepare for Operation Grief had taken place in mid-November. The Stylu unit was distributed over three armored brigade platoons during this exercise. Part of the exercises consisted of night marches and mutual identification. The main goal of the brigade was to sabotage and was to create confusion, especially around the Meuse River. The Germans wanted to keep that intact. They wanted to cut off any supplies coming from or to the Americans. They were supposed to make roads impassable by destroying them or obstructing them with trees behind enemy lines at night. During the day, the brigade rested in the woods. The brigade was to appear in U.S. uniforms during the day and incite panic or retreat. According to Schultz, this master plan that Scorsese had come up with to attack General Eisenhower's headquarters in Paris. Scorsese wanted to drive through France with 30 teams in U.S. Jeeps and U.S. uniforms. It should look like a prisoner transport with German prisoners of war. Some of Scorsese's men should therefore be dressed in officers' uniforms. In a Parisian cafe, they would meet French sympathizers who would join the Germans. Schultz told the Americans the best place to catch the Stalu units was near the bridges. He also mentioned possession of poison, including belt buckles and lighters. Explained these lighters that were prepared with poison. They were trained by Major Schroeder that they should take the poison in case of capture. According to Schultz, they believed him in Versailles about the plan to assassinate General Eisenhower, but what they didn't believe is that he was a German officer. They said his paybook was fake, and then once he was arrested, he had to prove that he was who he was, and that this was his paybook. Again, Lieutenant Gunther Schultz tried to work as a double agent for the Americans, but that didn't save his life. He was still executed June 14, 1945, near Braunschweig. Pastor Walter Freis, who was at the execution, said his last words were, I'm innocent. I don't know why I have to die. I die for Germany. Freis mentions that Gunther Schultz sent a scarf home to his bride. He gave the pastor three handwritten letters, one to his colleagues, one to his father, and one to his wife. I'll leave a link in the description to those letters. I spent more hours than I'd like to admit researching this uh, Operation Grief and the details on these individuals to make things even more mysterious. There is a gentleman by the name of Gunther Schills, um, S-C-H-I-L. Yes, and he has his own agenda, or I should say his own military, like where he was at and when, what rank, and he was executed as well on a different date than Gunther Schultz. Come to find out, they're different pictures, but they're pictures of the same person. So, this is where the, the term Griffin, I keep saying, comes in, where they basically made up a fake person person. I'm not sure exactly why that would be done unless it was to help out with the spying, but it definitely adds to the mystery around Gunther Schulz. 
if you'd like to see part one of this video that is also going to be the link in the description thank you very much for joining us today i really do appreciate it more than you all know the first german to be executed by this u.s ninth army firing squad is ss trooper hans becker at 19 years old he was caught at dasberg on april 5th 1945 where majority of these clothes. germans are part of the einheit stelu commando unit that was assembled from the best english speakers but most of these young guys never had an experience in undercover operations or sabotage and they had to be trained Germans gave them short courses in demolition radio skills. They studied the organization of the U.S. Army and its badges of rank and drill. Some were even sent to POW camps at Kustrin and Limburg to, to refresh their English language skills just by speaking to the American POWs. All of this information has come from an interview with Otto Scorsesne, the head honcho of this Operation Grief. These German spies would go out dressed in U.S. Army uniforms. The highest rank they ever used was a colonel. They'd be armed with U.S. Army weapons and using U.S. Army jeeps. The commandos were often given missions to destroy bridges, ammunition dumps, fuel stores. They did reconnaissance and passed on bogus orders to any U.S. units they met. They did things like reversing road signs, removing minefield warnings. Uh, they'd also cut off roads with warnings of non-existent mines. I mean, warnings of non-existent mines. They were skilled in destroying field telephone wires and radio stations, issuing false orders. All of this was fairly effective until the American GIs caught on and started asking each other questions that only Americans would know. This practice actually led to General, uh, or the American General Bruce Clark being held at gunpoint for some time after he in incorrectly said the Chicago Cubs were in the American League. The next German to be executed is Otto Tutberg, a 20-year-old SS trooper who was caught at Dasburg, Germany on April 5, 1945, wearing civilian clothing. Otto Tutberg is an interesting character. He's said to be a Wolverine. He's even cited that he's a German hero uh, by the Wolverines for dying for his country. The next SS trooper to be executed is 28-year-old German Heinrich Rolfing. He was captured in Dasper on April 5, 1945, dressed in civilian clothing. Like all the videos that I put out there, I do colorized black and white footage. So this is all original black and white archival footage that colorized fairly well. I just really think it gives these old archive videos a whole new life. All these executions took place on June 14, 1945, in a quarry near the city of Braunschweig, Germany, exactly between Dentsdorf and Weddlenstedt. To correct my last video, this is K. 